Thank you for watching The Fat Vegan Chef. Today's recipe is going to be a hit with your family. If you have kids, they can help you make this recipe and frost cookies. If not, then it just means more cookies for you. Today I will be making my grandmother Wolf's frosted creams or gingerbread cookies. This recipe was passed down to my mom and then to me. It is one of my childhood Christmas time traditions where mom would make and bake the cookies and the kids would help frost the cookies and lick the beaters. Now I'm sharing her recipe with you and I'm able to share it because of watchers like you who generously donated at tfvc.org forward slash donate. The ingredients in this recipe was paid for by you. And for that, I am very grateful. And without further ado, let's get baking. The tools that you will need to make these yummy gingerbread cookies are a few mixing bowls, a couple sheets of parchment paper, some baking pans, some cookie cutters, a sifter, measuring cups and measuring spoons, a rasp, some spatulas, a rolling pin, a, a couple more spatulas, a mixer, a pot, and some vegetable spray. For the gingerbread cookies, what you will need is one cup of vegan sugar, one cup of shortening, and this is the Earth Balance Shortening, one cup of dark molasses, one tablespoon of fresh grated ginger, one cup of water, one uh, teaspoon of baking soda, one quarter teaspoon of salt, uh, you'll need approximately two cups plus some more of white all-purpose flour. For the frosting, you will need one heaping tablespoon of soft earth balance from the buttery stick, two cups of powdered sugar that's been measured first and then sifted, one teaspoon of vanilla. You'll need vegan milk and there's no real measurement on this because it's going to depend upon things like the humidity and that kind of stuff. Um, too much and it's going to be runny, too little and it'll be too thick. So this is just a, basically a judgment call on that. You also need some red and green uh, food coloring. Alright, so you've got your tools and your ingredients gathered. First thing let's do is preheat our oven to 375 degrees. Once you've got that preheating, take your one cup of water put that in a pot along with the one teaspoon of baking soda and we're going to go ahead and put this on the stove and bring this up to a boil and while this is bringing up to a boil we'll go on to the next step okay we have our water on the stove so let's go ahead and cream our sugar and our butter. I'm going to add the one cup of sugar in there and our one cup of shortening. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to Cream this together until it turns a nice glossy white. Our sugar and shortening mixture has turned white. So what we'll do is we'll add the one cup of molasses. One tablespoon of ginger that's been grated, one quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt. Now we'll go ahead and give this a nice blend. Alright, all right, we've got the molasses mixed in there pretty good. Next what we'll do is we'll add in the boiling water and baking soda mixture and we're going to carefully mix that in there. Ok, 
Okay, now what we'll do is we will add in the flour. And you want to put in about a cup and a half to start with. And then go, we'll go from there. made. Now what we need to do is get our pans ready. And what we're going to do is just put on a couple pieces of parchment here. Get this side up. Spray it with some baking spray. Now what we'll do is, with our air surface here, we'll go ahead and dust on some flour, put some on your rolling pin, and we'll scrape out our dough here. We have our dough out of the pot and on a flour pan, um, table here. So what we're going to do is going to roll it out. We want it to be about a quarter of an inch thick. And it should, when you're done with it, you should have added enough flour so it's just rollable like it is now. You don't want it too stiff. And you don't want it too thin so it's runny. But this where you can actually kind of work it and it's sticking to the rolling pan so you need more flour. You don't want to overwork it otherwise the cookies become kind of too too tough. Next, what we'll do is we'll take our cookie cutters and we'll make shapes. And this part, your kids can help make the shapes. You do want some kind of a strategy while doing it though, because although you can re roll out the dough. You don't want to do it too often because the more times you do it, the tougher the dough is going to get. It's just a matter of carefully peeling away the excess and putting your cookies on the cookie sheet.
and you may need your bench scraper to help release the cookies. Now what you want to do is bake these off at 375 degrees for about 7 minutes or until they start to turn brown. You don't want to over bake them. So we're going to start with this batch. While that's cooking, I'll go ahead and get another batch ready to go in the oven. And I've got my timer set at 7 minutes. So after 7 minutes, I'll start keeping a closer eye on the cookies that are currently in the oven. And once they came out, come out, just take them off of the parchment paper and let them cool. And start another batch. We have our cookies cooling. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the icing. And what you'll need to do is add one heaping tablespoon of softened earth balance. And I just left this at room temperature for the uh, making of the cookies. You'll need two cups of powdered sugar. And you want to measure first and then uh, sift it to get the lumps out. And you want to do that, otherwise you're going to have lumpy icing, and we don't want lumpy icing. And also, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we're going to go ahead and start mixing this. And this milk here, um, this is just some vegan uh, soy milk that's unflavored and uh, unsweetened and there's really no real measurement on this. I'm starting with about half to three quarters of a cup here. I probably won't even use all of this. It's all going to depend upon how much humidity there is in the air and um, how much moisture is in the earth balance and the powdered sugar. So we'll go ahead and start on a low setting. and slowly add in the milk just a little bit at a time. And if you actually do add too much milk, you can always add in more powdered sugar to uh, make it less runny. You want it to be uh, thin enough to where you can spread it, but not too thin so it won't stay on the cookie. So that's what I'm looking for here. And I actually think that with the amount of cookies that I have to frost, I think I'm going to double this recipe. Yeah, I'm going to double this recipe. I have doubled the recipe. So that is about scant three tablespoons of earth balance, four cups of powdered sugar, vegan milk, two teaspoons of vanilla. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cut this in half here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color the frosting. I think I'm going to make this one red. And I would start with just a drop or two first. Let's 
see how that turns out. You can always put more in, but you can't take any out. All right, that's a nice festive red. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my beaters and do the same thing with the other half. And this time I'm gonna use green. I have my red and green frosting ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get some cookies ready to frost. While I'm doing that, go ahead and gather your kids if you have any, and let's frost some cookies. I have some cookies here ready to frost. Got my frosting ready, and now we just frost. This should be pretty uh, self-explanatory, and the fun is, is you can frost these guys however you like. I like to make the trees green, and then the stems red. Kids can get involved, frost their cookies. Let's make Santa's bag green. Santa himself red. And red cap. Red feet. I'm going to continue to uh, frost these cookies and then I'm going to be biting the heads off of some of these gingerbread men when I'm done. I really hope that you enjoyed this recipe. Let me know how it turned out in the comments. You can always follow me at the Fat Vegan Chef at your favorite social media outlet like Facebook and Twitter, Instagram. You can watch these videos at thefatveganchef.com or if you don't have access to a computer, you can also find us on Roku and other streaming devices like TVs. Just look for The Fat Vegan Chef on the Vegetarian Life channel. And as I stated before, this recipe was made possible by viewers like you. I had some generous donations that paid for the ingredients for this recipe. And for that, I really do appreciate it. And if you would like to donate, you can find out how by going to tfvc.org forward slash donate. And this holiday season, if you haven't done all of your shopping and you plan on shopping on Amazon, Look for a link on our website at tfvc.org forward slash donate. And you can shop on Amazon. It won't cost you anything more. And some of the money does go towards us. So you have that option as well if, if uh, you don't uh, have any money to donate to us directly. But you do plan on shopping on Amazon. Again, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to finish frosting these cookies and have a great holiday.